Like most kids that grew up in the valley, I had a strong interest in cruising. When I got to college and I actually studied a lot of anthropology, I began to realize that that was a uniquely American mating ritual uh, involving automobiles. I came up with the idea of doing the movie. It was in the 60s. It was, you know, the hippie culture, drugs, cruising was gone. And I really felt compelled to sort of document the whole experience of cruising and, and what my generation uh, used as a, as a way of meeting girls and what we did in our spare time. So after I finished THX, I was very, uh, didn't quite know what to do. Francis had challenged me to do something warm and fuzzy. I was very much advising that George focus on writing and, and that you know that he no doubt had the talent to write and and that ultimately it was all in the, the vision and the script and uh, that he could uh, write something uh, and make a film that would have a strong uh, audience enjoyment as part of it. So he sat down and, uh, and wrote American Graffiti. I wanted to uh, document the end of an era, how things change how uh, one of the life passages, how you go from being a student into the real world and you leave your hometown, you leave your family, you leave everything behind and you go off on your own and um, parallel that with what was going on in the United States at that time in terms of the loss of innocence, getting into the Vietnam War, the advent of British rock. You know, generally uh, issues that centered around the idea of change. I talked to Bill and Glory about the project. And he said, why don't you come over? I want to talk to you about something. So um, we went over, and he said, yeah, I want to do a movie about rock and roll. I'd love for you guys to write it and so forth. So we said, terrific. And I think it was almost a year later where he, when he said, you know, let's do it now. And we sat down, talked about the story outline I developed in terms of the various characters and the various story elements that happened. Which was initially just talking about people we knew in high school. We had all gone to high school at the same time, and I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, so, you know, that was a cruising culture, too. And uh, we thought about friends of ours and what the various stories might be. And then we started outlining, and we put a lot of cards up on a bulletin board. And we wrote, I think we wrote a 15-page treatment. And I took that treatment around to all the studios to see if I could get some money so that Bill and Gloria could write the script. Because I'd finished writing THX and I swore I'd never write another screenplay as long as I lived. So I took it around to all the studios, nobody wanted to do it. And I couldn't get any money to develop the screenplay. And this went on for quite a while. My first film, THX, uh, had been entered in the Cannes Film Festival in the director's fortnight, which is you know your first film there's a little side festival that has to do with directors and their first films. Warner Brothers was not real happy with me for making that movie, and they weren't going to pay my way to Europe or anything. But I had some money left over just from doing THX, and I decided to blow it all on a trip to Europe. I had been dealing with United Artists on the West Coast as sort of a vice president, and I said, this isn't getting me anywhere. I'm going to go and talk to the president of the company, who was David Picker. So when I was at the Cannes Film Festival, the one thing I got to do was go up in this big fancy hotel. We were staying on the outskirts in some little pension. I went in there and he said, um, well, I read the story treatment. It sort of makes sense to me. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you $10,000 to write the script. I immediately called Bill and Gloria on the phone and said, I got the money. You can start today. And he said, so when I get back, you should have the script done. And I said, well, it'll take us a little longer than that. And they said, well, we're in the middle of doing a cheapy horror movie. Which I said, George, you know, I want to direct, and this is a chance for me to make the movie, so, you know, we're really going to have to back out of this. And I said, oh dear, what am I going to do? And uh, so I called back here and got another friend of mine who had gone to school with, and I said, we've got this story treatment, we've got this outline, and I need a script, and I want to try to get it by the time I get back from Europe. I got back from Europe. I read this screenplay, which was very, very different than the story treatment. It was sort of hot rods to hell. You know, it was a very 
very different, much more theatrical kind of piece. And I said, oh my God, what am I gonna do? He got paid all the money. So I had no money left. I had no script. And I had to t turn something into United Artists. So I sat down and I started from scratch and I wrote a new script based on the um, story treatment that Bill and Gloria and I had worked out. And um, finished it in three weeks, turned it over to United Artists, and they hated it. They said, we don't want to make this movie. It's a musical montage. There's no characters, there's no story. They said, no, we don't want to do this. So I think for a year, George went around trying to get graffiti made. Nobody wanted to do it. So then I came back and I uh, was running out of money because I'd spent most of my money on going to Europe. So I was getting pretty desperate. And I started getting job offers because of THX. They started offering me to do basically record albums. Um, things like Tommy and Hair and, you know, all kind of movies that don't have any plots. But I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a rewrite on this script. So I did another rewrite on the script, took it around to all the studios again, and finally Universal said, well, this is an interesting project. I think we'll do it. They said, well, one thing you need is we need to connect some kind of name to this. And I said, well, you know, it's a cast of teenagers. How in the world am I going to get a name connected? They said, well, it could be anybody. It could be, you know, a producer or somebody. And so I went back to Francis and I said, Francis, they want a name. And he had just finished shooting The Godfather. It was about to come out. And um, so the talk was really high on it. And I said, would you like to produce this for me? Because I need a name. Well, I believed in uh, American gra Graffiti from the moment I read it and uh, thought it was very funny and very warm. And I said, of course. So we went back to Universal. I said, well, what about Francis? Would he be a big enough name for you? And they said, oh, yeah, great. You got Francis. You got the deal. So I got the deal, and we started casting, and we started making, getting ready to make the movie. And I said, I read the script, and I said, you know, this script still needs a lot of work, especially the Steve and Laurie story uh, was, was very weak. So I called up Bill and Gloria. This was about two years later. You know, it's taken me about two years to get from the first phone call, hey, do you want to do the script, to this phone call, which is, I'm about to go into production. Do you want to do a quick rewrite for me? We had talked about this so thoroughly, and we knew the characters so well that when we went back, we were able, you know, to pull everything together that we had wanted originally. They came in and rewrote the script for me at the last minute and um, really punched up the Steve and Laurie story. And there was no discussion, no studio, nothing. George loved it, and that was it. That's, I mean, that's really the story of how the whole thing got started. In our minds, we couldn't imagine that this picture would be a success because it was such a small picture and it had no movie stars or anything you associate with a Hollywood success. So we're standing in the unemployment line collecting our unemployment, and behind us is Rick Dreyfus also in the employment line. And he, he, he said, well, you know, have you heard about the screenings? And, and he said, oh, God, I, I just really, I ruined the picture. I feel so bad. I just destroy the movie. And, and, you know, we were very nervous. We didn't know what to say. And we kept saying, no, no, we think you're really good. And, and, but, you know, I, 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 we can't imagine the movie will do anything. And then a person in front of us in the line said, hey, I was at a sneak of that preview last night. That movie's really great. Well, I got terrible reviews in San Francisco. San Francisco Chronicle said it was the worst film ever made. You know, they have these little, little men that sit in boxes, and, you know, he's either standing up cheering, or he's clapping, or he's just sitting there, or he's asleep, or he's not in the chair. Well, American Graffiti is not even in the chair. So that was the San Francisco opinion of it, which was extremely low. But fortunately, a lot of the rest of the country liked the movie. Whenever you do a movie like that, you know, you get, you get bad reviews, you get good reviews. I would say that uh, probably on that one, 70% of the reviews are very good, and, you know, 30% were pretty awful. You know, there are themes that I, I've been fascinated with, and they start at THX, and they continue through Marion Graffiti, and they go into Star Wars, and they evolve and mature, and, but I like to take themes that I feel strongly about and then put them in different kinds of situations and, and, and explore them in different contexts. And that's a lot of what was going on in all three of those movies. Uh, there you'll see a lot of issues uh, reemerge in different ways. In all three of those movies, it's about a lead character who is put into a situation where they have to make a decision to leave. They're all about that transitional uh, 
time in a person's life when you have to make a very major change. How do you become brave enough to take one step beyond and go into something that you're not really that experienced at? It was one of the first films to use uh, you know, music from records. It was one of the first movies to ever tell four stories simultaneously and have the four stories not really be connected with each other. The studio said that was impossible. You can't do that. You have to tell one story and then the next story and the next story and the next story. Well, now all of television is done that way. I mean, almost every television show has got that style. Uh, but at the time, it was extremely controversial. And one of the reasons that a lot of the studios would not touch it was because I was trying to intercut these four stories. It seems like now it's like ridiculous. But at the time, it was a big issue. They wouldn't make the movie. They didn't feel the story had enough, you know, Hollywood pizzazz. I mean, they wanted a murder. They wanted a... Uh, you know, kids getting killed. They wanted, you know, they wanted to have it be, you know, really hyper. And I didn't want to do that. You know, I was fortunately able to make it because I made it for so little money. I think one of the reasons it was as successful as was because it was very different from the standard fare of the time. It's, uh, it's interesting because Star Wars sort of suffered from the same fate. People don't realize with these kind of movies that it become very successful. I mean, American Graffiti is one of the most successful investments of all time. The return on the dollar spent is, I think, greater than almost any other movie made. But it's because of the fact that they're fresh and they're different and they're experimental that I think people like to watch them. Now, the whole industry sort of moves in that direction and they become the standard, but you, people forget that at the time those movies were made, especially American Graffiti, it was a very avant-garde movie. 